we got to watch it getting built from the ground, from the dirt. So, yeah, we think it's great. I like doing, like, sport and PE, so I like how there's, like, the big ovals and the gym and the hall are good too. I like the playground the best on the school. It's nice, it's big, it's roomy, and the staff and teachers are wonderful with the kids. So thank you. And right now I'm doing technology and visual arts, and it's really fun. Mark Oliphant College sits proudly amidst a rapidly changing landscape of new housing and infrastructure. It's all part of Playford Alive, a new development covering 1,000 hectares located 30 kilometres north of Adelaide. 13,000 people live in this area. That number is expected to rise to 40,000 within the next 15 years. This college is one of two new state-of-the-art schools catering to the young families moving here. It's South Australia's first purpose-built facility to offer childcare right through to Year 12, all on the one campus. Since the college opened its doors in May 2011, more than 1,100 students have enrolled and plenty of others are on the waiting list. You only get certain moments in your teaching career that are really, really special. And watching every one of those parents come in with their kids and walking around, even though the kids have been there the week before, sent a shiver down your spine as people walked around with their mouths agape saying, this is ours? We've actually got this? We're entitled to this? We can have this? OK, come on, fellas, what are we doing here? Birds and engraving the wood and using a laser. Principal Lynn Simons jumped at the opportunity to spend the last years of her career in education as head of a brand new state-of-the-art school. But the role comes with a challenge, to turn around the low academic results that have until now been the norm for many children living in this area, designated as one of the lowest socioeconomic in Australia. This school's not an experiment. It's actually a real living, breathing school. It was built in an area where the schools were in appalling condition. This is the facilities that are now possible in the rest of the world. What we've been fortunate enough to do is actually have it built here. How many rotations do you want to make it go back? Oh, ten. Ten? Okay. Let's put in the stop block. In keeping with its namesake, scientist and former South Australian Governor Sir Mark Oliphant, the school's developing a science focus. The thing I love about Sir Mark was that he was also slightly eccentric. And I think that as a school, we're standing out being slightly eccentric too. And we've been given carte blanche by the fact that we are so new to take those chances. For us as teachers to have these resources, it's once in a lifetime. Fantastic, well done. So how many centimetres did you set it to stop before the 15. 15. And that's about 15. That's pretty good. The school's layout around a circular walkway is designed to promote a sense of community. OK, go and line up, please. Now, I say sometimes, it's like Champs de Lys say, if you stand here long enough, you'll meet everybody in the world walk past you. Boys, move it. Lesson six, please. It's an amazing place to be when you've got 1,100 kids promenading around here and doing it basically with goodwill and no, no major issues except the normal rumbunctiousness one gets from little kids who want to play with big kids. Hello. Hi, <laughs> Where's your hat? <laughs> We're learning about Russia and all kinds of different countries, so we're going to go overseas to look up what the information that we find out on the laptops. Technology is a major tool in the quest to level the playing field and give these students every chance to fulfil their potential. The investment in technology means students get hands-on experience with the kind of cutting-edge equipment now being used by various industries. Originally when I started teaching it was all pen and paper but now kids can actually create three-dimensional models and then from there go to designing and producing these things and it's just, you know, I could never believe that would be possible when I started, so it's absolutely fantastic. The pies that we made today, we could never get that crispy, crunchy pastry at the bottom, but with these fabulous ovens, every single pie works out magically, it's brilliant. We wanted our kids to be producers, not just consumers. And so we want them in this millennium's learning and ensuring that through that, 
they're going to have the best possible opportunities to get the best qualifications and the best employment outcomes. The books help me learn to read. And I like to read a lot. Oh, I reckon it'd be great for my son to you know, have a leapfrog into a job. You know, hopefully you know, he'll find what he wants to do here and uh, follow on with it. Yeah, I've got four children from kindy up to year 11. And so far, so good. All the children enjoy themselves. I like it because it's not like every kind of school and it has um, all, like, family in it. When I walk out the last time, I hope I leave a school that is completely confident in itself. And I hope I can say that the current crop of year eights who will actually have hit year 12 by then, that their destination surveys show that they're accessing not only universities, but TAFEs, but apprenticeships, but jobs, but the whole range and the whole gamut. That's the legacy I want to leave behind. And that a school that knows it's proud of itself.